Well, joining me now to discuss the conflict in Israel and Gaza is a TV host and satirist, Bassam Youssef. Uh, Bassam, it's uh, great to have you back on the programme. I wish it was under different circumstances. Um, first of all, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Oh, it was terrible, of course. I mean, we kind of get our news kind of also secondhand because, you know, my, my wife's family, they live in Gaza. They actually have uh, cousins and uncles there. Um, and uh, their house also was bombed. We haven't been able to communicate with them for the past three days. Communication are lost. So uh, we don't know actually what is the, uh, how, is they, how are they doing, but, you know, we're used to that. I mean, it's it just like, it's, it's, it's very repetitive. We're used to that. We're used to them being bombed every time and moving from one place to the other. Uh, you know, it's just like those Palestinians, they're very dramatic. Ah, Israel killing us. Uh, but they never die. I mean, they always come back. You know, they're, they're very difficult to kill, very difficult people to kill. I, I know because I'm married to one. Mm. I tried many times, couldn't kill her. <laughs> I mean, there's a dark humor there, and I understand why. Because oh, it's not dark humor. I really, I try to get to her every time, but she uses our kids as human shields. I can never take her out. <laughs> Again, I understand the, the humor, but I, to be serious, uh, Bassem, about this, Tonight, there okay, is... I will be serious. Now, I, I, I will be serious. I was watching your interview with Ben Shapiro, and I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I think that Ben Shapiro is one of the smartest people who ever walked this earth. He's very, very smart. I follow him, and I believe everything he said. And when he came on your show, his solution was, and I quote, his solution was that the solution for this is for Israel to annex Gaza and to kill as many son of bitches as possible to make sure that this will never happen again. And anyone... Anyone who called for a ceasefire will be a terrorist sympathizer. So God forbid, I don't want to be labeled as a terrorist sympathizer. So I agree with Ben Shapiro. I think we should kill as many son of bitches as possible. Well, let me, so okay. far, but Basa, three, let me, uh, three, no, no, so, 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 so far, 3,500 people were killed, mm -hmm. including 5,000 son of bitches in the bombing of the Baptist uh, 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 hospital as we speak right now. Mm -hmm. One third of those 3,500 were children. So my question to Ben Shapiro is, how many more son of bitches do we need to kill so Ben Shapiro is happy? Okay, because but, it changes but, from but, so one year. Let me just stop there, just from say, one, no, just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That I, please, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm really at a disadvantage here. I'm looking at a camera. I don't see you. I can hear you on my no, The ears, reason I'm interrupting so is I think you might be... I think, I think you're conflating different interviews with Ben Shapiro. He didn't use the phrase sons of bitches with me. Let me play to you what he actually said he did, on my... He did. He did. Go what? back Go back to your interview. No, he, he, he didn't. Did. That was another interview. But let me play what he said to me here. Well, I, frankly, I don't believe in proportionate response to terrorism. I believe that the way that you stop terrorism is with wildly disproportionate response. That doesn't mean in terms of targeting civilians. It means in terms of killing as many terrorists as humanly possible and allowing them to dictate the terms of engagement by hiding behind civilians in areas that, that they are supposedly responsible for means that the only option for Israel is to surrender to Hamas's hatred of its own citizens, its willingness to use its own children as human shields. No, no country worth its salt could ever do that. Now, that is significant, substantively different to what you said he said, right? He's talking there but, but specifically I agree, I, about I Hamas agree with him. I agree, I, I, I agree with him. The, the thing is, the question is, what is a proportionate response? Because yes. it has been different from one tier to another. So if you look to this graph, for example, this is the death of Israeli and Palestinians, and it's changing from one year to year. It's like fluctuating like crypto. So my question is today, what is the going rate today for human lives? I mean, 2014 was a great year for Ben Shapiro. 88 Israelis were died, and there was 2,329 Palestinians killed on the other side. That is one Israeli for 27 uh, Palestinians. That is a very good exchange rate. What I'm saying is, what is the exchange rate well, for I, today? Well, I, so I, you guys will be happy. That's my question. Well, it's not me, I, I it's not me guys. I, I don't, I'm not on either no, side No, 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 not you. Like, when I yeah. say you guys, I say, like, the people on the other side of that. I know that you, you don't think like that. You are one of the good guys. But let me tell you something. I mean, I'm, the reason that I'm, I'm using this is that, I mean, I, could, I can't remember what happened in 2014, and there was no music festival, but there, were, there must be something. I mean, they must do something. It is their fault. It has to be something. I mean, 2018, 300 Palestinians died. Ah, who's counting, you know? Uh, but the, the, so the thing is, what my question is, let's find what is the exchange rate for human life today so we know, expect the future death of Palestinians and would be happy to it. My, my response to that would be this, Bassem. I've thought carefully about this uh, because I think it's very tricky 
for people like me to immerse ourselves into a conflict where we're not directly involved. And I thought carefully mm -hmm. about what I feel about this. I feel that the scale of what Hamas did on October the 7th supersedes anything else I've seen in this conflict really ever. The, the, the savagery, yes. the butchery, the slaughter of 1,300 Absolutely. people, the uh, shooting of babies, the 100%. kidnapping of grandmas and so on. So if, if we can agree on that, which I think is inarguable, then the question then becomes, again, about proportion. I, I don't disagree that there's been a lot of bad stuff on both sides going back historically for decades. But if we agree that this was on a different level altogether, quite deliberately by oh. Hamas... Designed, I, absolutely. designed you know to provoke. I'm gonna, designed I'm, to provoke. No, here's my I'm question. Be a... Let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. and, and the question, because the you, question? you raised it earlier about proportion. I honestly don't know what the proportionate response is. Uh, I, yes. I, I honestly don't. I, I don't. I've been watching the airstrikes so this what's week. Your thinking, so what's your question? Well, I was asked. Well, I would ask you, if you were Israel, what would uh, you? If I was Israel. If you were Israel and that had happened to you. What would you uh -huh. think would be the appropriate way for the country to respond? I would do exactly like Israel did, kill as many people as possible since the, the, the world is letting me do it. I mean, I, I can do it because I can, you know. But the thing is, like, you know what, I agree with you. And you know what, I'm going to be even ahead of you because I see the question coming. Do you condemn Hamas for the atrocities? Yes, I condemn Hamas. Mm. I condemn Hamas. I condemn Hamas. Hamas is the source of all evil. They are the reason for everything. And you know what, let's for a minute... Imagine a world without Hamas. Right. What will this world look like? Mm. Let's give this world a name, and let's name this world the West Bank. Hamas has absolutely no control in the West Bank. And since the beginning of this year, only through August, 37 Palestinian kids were killed. Mm. No music festival, no paragliding, no Hamas. Mm. Since the occupation of the West Bank, 7,000 Palestinians were killed. No music festival, no paragliding, no Hamas. Mm. I can go on and on and on and on. No, no, but you about, don't, you don't need to because, in a way, in a way, you're preaching to the choir. I've I've followed this crisis. Oh no, for... you're not preaching. So the, the the thing is, like, I, well, in the sense I that I know, say... I know that what you're saying has validity. Of course, of uh, course. Uh, I Pierce, do. Pierce. By the way, Pierce, Pierce, Pierce. I am at a disadvantage here. I can hear you. I cannot see you. Hmm. I am in a claustrophobic room, and so please cut, cut me some slack and don't interrupt me and interrupt my points. Sure. So, uh, because this, this, this has to be fair. Understand. Uh, because if you want to only hear your opinion, I can just condemn Hamas and go home. Mm. I can do that. So, if you, do you want to do that or do you have a much more nuanced conversation? No, I absolutely want to have a nuanced conversation. I wasn't aware I was interrupting you. I thought I was letting you speak. Amazing. But... So, let's, I mean, I, mean I, would say, I would say I really applaud Israel for doing one thing that no military force in the world does. Because I heard, I heard Ben Shapiro and I heard Ron DeSantis and they said, They said Israel is the only military force in the world that warns civilians before bombing them. I mean, how fucking cute. That is so nice of them. So, because with this logic, if Russian troops started warning Ukrainians before bombing their houses, we're cool with Putin, right? I mean, okay, Habibi, you have uh, warned them, go invade. It's fine. You have done your job. I mean, the thing is, and I understand, all, and I also heard Ben Shapiro talking about Uh, about human shield. So you remember my wife's family, they live in Gaza. So I asked them, I told them, when Israel gives you the nice warning, the cute warning, does Hamas force you to stay in your home so you can be bombed and use a, a, as, as human shield? You know, what, Hassan here, uh, my, my, wife's, uh, my wife's cousin, he's a, he's, a, he's a loser, you know. He, he told me, you know, when I asked him, does that happen? He told me, no. The lying son of a bitch lied to me. I told him, you don't understand. Ben Shapiro and Ron DeSantis keep saying that Israel warns you and Hamas asks you to, keep, to stay put. So I, 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 I told you, he's a loser. He never kept a job. He even like failed in all of the interviews to become like a human shield. I, I, I would believe right. Ben Shapiro. Let But me let's, ask you this, let, So let's go with that. No, no, no. Let's, no, no. Let me ask But you At some this. point, I must be able to if ask we, you questions. If we, it's not if a monologue agree, for if you, agree, If we agree, if we agree that for the 14,000 casualties, I mean, who's counting? Our human shield, does that mean that every single one of those civilians was standing, obscuring a military target behind them? Because that's a lot of weapons. I mean, Hamas is packing. No, of course it doesn't. It, and look, I, you know... It I doesn't, so, so, there, so there is some collateral damage. Lots of collateral damage. Yes. It's fine. Yeah. You kill, you kill some to save some and then kill some more. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I agree. I would, let I me agree. ask you this. Again, it comes back to proportionate response. When the, world, yes. when the world decided it had to get rid of ISIS because of the appalling butchery they were carrying out, uh, yes. it did so by, by also killing 
it, very sadly, a lot of civilians along the way by doing airstrikes against places which But killing civilians ISIS are inevitable. So you my, said that in the beginning. My point is once... It's, in, it's inevitable. Yeah, but once, it's Israel, inevitable. We, once we, we, Israel has decided that they want to get rid of Hamas, mm -hmm. and Hamas is embedded with civilian yes. population, I'm very concerned about yes. what's going to happen next. I've written a column tonight saying yeah, I remember the Iraq and, and the war, which is, I opposed, I, right? I, I, I remember all this. So my I, question for you is... I know. I, what would, be, what would yeah, you think would be an appropriate response by Israel to what happened? Well, well, the, these are years of disproportionate responses of Israel. Right. Did it solve the solution? Did it solve the problem? Did it, did it work before so it will work? What, what will be the surprise this time? What will be the twist that will make this work this time? What? What will be different this time? Seriously, I mean, like, this is only the last 15 years. I mean, because it's too, too many papers. I just got this. But what, how, how will this will be different? And the thing is, it, I am so glad in the introduction that you mentioned the Iraq war. I applaud you, Pierce, for saying that because you were honest about it. You said that spreading lies like WMDs make mm -hmm. people look at those people as less of humans and they would accept the death of a million Iraqi, whether by shanks no, sanctions agree. or by invasion, right? You are, you, you are a good man. This is amazing. And you know what is similar? Is when you spread the lies of 40 decapitated babies, although it was refuted. So what happens when people hear that, you know, killing babies is horrible. But when you say decapitated 40 babies, you are planting a certain image well, who with has a said certain that? trigger in people's mind. Who has said huh? that? Who has said 40? Who has said that? Who has said that? 40 decapitated? Who has said you that? Have, you have repeated. No, no, I haven't. What? I've never said that. You haven't said on your show 40 decapitated no. babies? Never. Ben Shapiro didn't say it? No. Ron DeSantis didn't say Nobody it? Nobody has said okay, it. Okay, uh, Peter, no, they nobody haven't. said it? No. Oh, okay, okay, maybe I am wrong. Decapitated, here's yeah, the thing. You're wrong, I've never said the that. The thing, what happened, what, yeah, what, what, no, you're, you're wrong. But the like, thing is, when Iraq, the thing is, the same thing is happening in Iraq. Ben Shapiro once tweeted, not even about Gaza, about the West Bank, when Israel continued to build the illegal settlement. Mm -hmm. He said, 2017, Israel likes to build things and Arabs, not Palestine, not Hamas, mm -hmm. Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Yeah, I thought that yeah, was very, Bernan, very the, 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 Israeli the, the, Israeli defense, mm -hmm. the, the Israeli defense minister, he said, those are human animals. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, Ben Shapiro should know better because, you know, long before the Holocaust, before Jewish people were thrown in the gas chambers. The Nazi propaganda called them rats. Mm. Now, as a human being, I will never accept that another human being being thrown in a, into a gas chamber, but a, a rat, kill a t 10, kill a thousand, 3,500. They are a son of a bitch. They are human animals who live in open sewage and decapitate babies. And mm. because of that propaganda, Mr. Morgan, mm. that guy in Illinois, the 71 years old guy, he killed stabbing the six years old Palestinian kid in Illinois 26 times. And he used to play with him. They used to be friends. But he went in, marching into their apartment, stabbing his mother and killing him, shouting, all Muslims could die. Yeah. It took you 80 years to change one word from Jewish to Muslim. Mm. And then you transferred your guilt to us and took away our land. Let me ask you a question. That, that deal sucks, man. Let me ask you a yeah. question. Uh, ask, ask how do him. we get from where we are now to peace? Well, first of all, you need to change the perception. Uh, Nikki Haley, the American presidential candidate, said, we are in Israel in this because it's a fight between evil, uh, good and evil. Now, if you already decided someone is good, he can do no evil. And if you decided someone is evil, it's good to kill them. Killing them is good. You see, and, and the thing is, it is, it is not like something new. I mean, I, I, I look at history and I see, I'm sorry to say, and I'm sorry to say this, but Westerners has, has always dealt like this with indigenous people. You first treated them like savages, you know, Native American, First Nation, Aboriginal. They're savages. Kill all the savages. And then when they're almost extinct, you start feeling sorry for them, you know, like animals. So maybe, maybe the solution is that we kill as many Palestinians as possible so the few of them that remains do not bother you. And you maybe keep, Netanyahu, you keep talking he about, for, it, for another Hussain, 100 years, he'll become a tree hugger. Let me a, just challenge you on this. And he will campaign All right, for, listen, for, for, for you, preserving you keep, the free You keep talking about yeah, Westerners go. like me. Okay, so let me return the favor, okay? 
Hamas yeah. is dedicated to the complete eradication of Jewish people. I am they, not the spokesman for Hamas. I'm not saying you are. Why do you go? Why do you get, I'm not saying I'm you not are. I'm spokesman. You're talking I to me. I fucking hate them. Basem, Fuck Hamas. You are. Go you are, some Hamas. No, are no, you happy? You're missing my point. You're talking in a okay. generalized way about people in the West who always talk about Arabs yeah. as savages. I don't. No, no, no. I'm talking I never about have. America. I'm, about I actually Western led the media. campaign. I'm West... I led the I'm... media campaign Listen, in this when... country against the Iraq War. Okay, so I don't you see. Are, you, you, I don't you see people the in the Middle ones, East as savages. You but are what I would one say of is, the good ones. But what I, I would am say not is, talking about you. You're great. No, no, it's not about me You're being amazing. great. It's we about, love you. It's about it's about the way Hamas behaved on October the seventh was like savages, like a pack of savages. It was the worst atrocity against Jewish people yes. since the Holocaust. There has to be... Of course. There has to be a response. They, and my they question should be eradicated. Is, my question for you is, notwithstanding the, the history, Basim, what is the proportionate response? But I don't know, but there's no Hamas in the West Bank and they're still dying there. So what's mm. your excuse? I don't have any excuse. The, OK, what's, what's your explanation? Sorry, sorry, uh, my earpiece went down. Mm. I, okay. I listen. I don't make any pretense that this hasn't been a massive problem okay, wh 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 uh, between Palestine I, 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 and Israel I, I, yeah. going back to the mid '40s. We all know this, right? I, I, I'm, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Pierce, Pierce, Pierce. Listen, I'm not saying that you're making excuses, but if you are adopting a certain point of view, mm. you have to at least defend it. I'm telling you, there is no Hamas in the West Bank. What is what is the excuse? Mm. Not your excuse. What is the excuse to kill those people? Mm. Well, it's, listen, this question of proportionality is one that... No, it, no, no, answer my question. I've been answering your question. You answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. It's not. OK, not your, not your job. Not. I, I, I agree with I'm you. I'm more it interested in you, job. who has family in Gaza, who's an Egyptian I'll, I'll you, in, that, in the Middle I'll East, right? I'm more interested in what you, you know, have to say. Let, OK, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I think Hamas is the problem, OK? Right. Now, let's say agree. Hamas is removed. Let's Hamas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm agreeing with everything. Hamas. You want me to condemn Hamas? I will condemn Hamas, Hummus, Hassan, uh, mm. everyone. Guys, let's say, for example, Hamas ceased mm. to exist. OK, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hamas ceased to exist today. Now, right now in Palestine, mm. in West Bank and, and, uh, and Gaza, 20 percent of Palestinians go through Israeli prison system, whether mm. imprisonment, whether uh, 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 interrogation, whether torture. And the rest of them, they live a life of daily loss of land, of homes, of life, mm. and they are, they are suffocated by this. So let me ask you something. If you are a Palestinian living into these conditions for decades, mm. would, you, would you sympathize with your oppressor or sympathize with the people who claim they resist them even if they are terrorists? I have made, I have made no secret that I think the conditions Palestinians have had to exist under are completely unacceptable. Yeah. I've said that for years. So the question then becomes, okay. how do you forge peace between two warring parts of that region who, for decades, have approached peace, in my view, with mutual sledgehammers, with no actual desire to have peace? And I think it comes down, in the end, to great leadership. Well, and well, I, I don't think there's yeah, great yeah, leadership... Yeah, but, but, I don't think... Well, hang on, let me make my point. I don't think there's great leadership on either side. Where is the Nelson Mandela figure here? to come through all this Nelson, hatred Nelson, on both Nelson sides. Nelson Mandela? Yeah, well, where is that Nelson figure? Mandela, N N Nelson Mandela actually have criticised Israel for being a horrible state. All of the South African uh, I, I <laughs> activists know. have actually my point is, Israel. My, uh, uh, my point is yes. about how he, how he responded to a country that was so divided. Is a, tem I, I is a, template, I I I, is a template for how you I, get to peace, isn't it? I, I, I haven't met Nelson Mandela, so I wouldn't know. Mm. But like, I, 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 there is a point. There's a there's a very important point here. You know, I want to understand what is the logic of Israel carpet bombing Gaza. I mean, if there is a logic, if it is a good, if this will make Israel safe, I want to hear the logic. So if they continue bombing, what are they hoping to achieve? Well, that's I think what, we, know what what we know what their stated aim is. Their stated aim is to eradicate yes. and wipe out Hamas. They believe Hamas no, are, yeah, living, but... are living predominantly in northern Gaza. They also are aware they're living amongst civilians. So it's an incredibly difficult okay. thing. As so, I said, as I said so, in my so monologue, so, so, you know, it is so very, very so difficult to see how I, they I, do I, this I, without I, massive collateral damage. Can, so if I can understand this correctly, basically Israel is doing this to pressure the Palestinian community in Gaza to turn against Hamas. Is that right? I'm sure that's part of it, yes. That's part of it. So this is exactly what terrorist organizations do, because terrorist organizations, 
will have no chance beating a whole nation in battle. So they terrorize and they kill the civilians in order to spread fear and terror so they can turn against their government to change their policy or to resign. You have just compared Israel with ISIS. No, I haven't. I don't, th I don't see any comparison between it's Israel It's going to be the headlines tomorrow. Piers only, Morgan, no, not, Israel not. is ISIS. Only, is only amongst people who weren't listening. The, the comparison, of which course. is more apposite, is ISIS and Hamas. They are both nihilistic yes, terror groups absolutely. intent on killing as many Jewish people and others as they can possibly kill. And you, you, can't, know what? I'm you, can't, you can't get I'm peace with people like that. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to do something that nobody done on your television. Mm. You know what I'm going to do I'm on your episode? I'm going to do I'm going to pretend that I'm an Israeli citizen. I'm going to put my, my, myself in the, in the place of an Israeli settler in the kaputz. And I want to speak to my prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, I have voted for you because you have promised us peace and prosperity and security. On the 7th of October, those son of bitches Hamas, they went into the fence that is regularly heavy, heavily guarded. Usually if there's like a, a, a dove that comes close to it, it will be shot. Mm. Those people went in and they went for six hours before IDF forces was deployed, killing our friends, our families, kidnapping our grandmothers and babies and went in. I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, after you have fractured the Israeli community and you have fucked our courts, our Supreme Courts, what are you doing with the money being given to you to the United States? Also, you are carpet bombing Gaza with absolutely no regard to our hostages, our people. I heard a rumor in the kibbutz that you're doing that as an, you let that happen to, as an excuse to carpet bomb Gaza, so you push them into Sinai. And I didn't believe it. That's like, not my prime minister. He can never do that. And then I watched an interview for Danny Ailon. He was your chief advisor. He was also the Israeli ambassador to the United States. And you know what he said, Mr. Prime Minister? He said that the solution for those Palestinians is to go into a vast land of Sinai and live into 10 cities temporarily, huh? temporarily, wink, wink, until we build Gaza again, and then we invite you back. Aha. So we've seen this movie before. So and I, and when I saw this, I couldn't explain to my fellows in the kibbutz how come our Israeli government is trading human lives for another piece of land? So as an Israeli citizen, I need to hold my Israeli government accountable. And as an American citizen, I want to know all of these money that we are giving to Israel. We're giving them $4 billion every year. Joe Biden said it's the best investment they ever, America ever done. Well, I, if I am in the, in the place of Joe Biden, I would say, sorry, don't speak uh, yet. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say if I was Joe Biden, I would go down and whisper in the ears of Netanyahu and tell them I hate bad investments. They haunt me, you know, like Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. But the thing is, the thing is, this is the problem. Israel always victimizes itself. And I have never seen a victim putting their oppressor under siege and bombing them 24-7. Israel wants you to believe that they are the victim. Is, dealing with Israel is so difficult. It's like being in a relationship with a narcissistic psychopath. He fucks you up, and then he makes you think it's your fault. All right, you Basim. look at Israel as Superman, but they're really homelander. Well, like, they, are like, they, are, you, they are shooting Basim, fish I want to say in a barrel, thing. and I they are annoyed with the splashes. Basim, I want to say two things. One, if you could just slightly manage your language. We are uncensored, but if you keep swearing... I, I'm very sorry. We I have am, to apologise to viewers sorry. who I'm may so be sorry. offended by that. I apologise. Um, but I understand I passions run high, so let's not get too bogged down about the old swear uh, I apologise to the um, viewers. I apologise to the viewers for my language. I, my second question the, is this. The, after the, the, the site of, uh, of dead civilians... After the break, we have the managing director of The Daily Wire, which is Ben Shapiro's company. We were going to interview him on his own, but he's happy to come on and talk with you directly, if you are prepared to stay. Well, of course, I, I, I can stay, but again, I am... <sighs> fuck this... I am in a disadvantage, and I would like to have my space to respond. OK, we'll come back after the break. I back to Uncensor. For more on the situation in Israel, I'm joined now by the CEO and co-founder of The Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's partner, Jeremy Boring. Uh, Jeremy, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I'm sorry we demoted you earlier to mere MD. You are the CEO and co-founder. Uh, you know Ben Shapiro better than anyone, really. Uh, I did a big interview with Ben, obviously, the other night. Um, which went around the world um, and has sparked a big reaction, including from uh, our guest, Bassam Youssef, who's still with us. First of all, you've been listening to, to Bassam and what he's been saying. What's your response? Well, first of all, 
I make it a point not to speak for Ben Shapiro. He's got a 20 IQ points on me and speaks for a living professionally. Mm -hmm. So he's much better prepared to defend himself. But as his business partner, as his best friend, I, I do feel like I have to respond to the things that Bassam was just saying. Uh, first of all, the question of how many sons of bitches have to be killed in order to end this conflict, I, mean, I suppose that the answer is as many of them as it takes. That doesn't mean that I or Ben or any decent person in their right mind is happy with the killing of civilians. Uh, I posted at the very beginning of this conflict that a, a woman or a child blown apart in Gaza is just as tragic as a Jewish baby killed in one of the settlements. That doesn't mean that Israel's actions and the actions of Hamas are morally equivalent. You know, the tragedy is the tragedy, but the moral equivalency is nonsense. If you if you entered Israel with the express purpose of targeting and murdering civilians with your own hands in cold blood, that is not comparable to Israel bombing targets in the Gaza Strip and killing civilians as a terrible, tragic consequence. War war is terrible. War is an awful thing. That's why decent people don't lightly engage in war and why Hamas should not have incited this war. You know, we can talk about the history of the Israeli conflict. I'm not a professional political commentator. I'm a, I'm a CEO. I'm a screenwriter. Uh, and I'm certainly not Ben Shapiro. Uh, I'm not here to discuss the history of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but we all saw what happened on October 7th. And the idea that Israel was not going to react severely to that or that Israel should not react severely to that is ludicrous. And the Jeremy, idea let me ben ask you, the idea that Ben the Shapiro question. should be a moderating voice, mm. that Ben Shapiro should be, what, saying, no, Israel should not respond mm. in this situation, that's nonsense. Let, let me ask you, though, Jeremy, what, I mean, the question which I think is the big question, what is a proportionate response to that outrage on October the 7th, which is the worst attack on Jewish people since the Holocaust? Uh, what is proportionate, if it's true, as reports well, there... are suggesting tonight, that there may have been a hospital hit by a, an Israeli strike and up to 500 people or more have died, that would yep. seem to me, if that is verified, and it's not verified yet, it, you know, we don't know exactly what has happened other than there's been a hit on this hospital. But if that is verified to have been an Israeli strike, that will strike many people as disproportionate. Certainly. Well, first of all, I don't know what a proportionate response is or why we would want it. I suppose a proportionate response would be for 3,000 Israelis to go through the fence, gun down innocent Palestinian women and children, burn their bodies, burn them alive, take hostages, rape their women. No one wants a proportionate response. No, no moral person could possibly call for a proportionate response. The purpose of war is to defeat your enemy. The West has, in my lifetime, forgotten the purpose of war because the true cost of war is so terrible. Mm. The last time the West engaged in war and won it was World War II, and they did it through incredible brutality. They did it by bringing their enemies to heel. That is not a thing to that's not a thing to rah rah about. That's not a thing to look forward to. As I said, all decent people should avoid war. But I think the sort of lie of the post World War II, the post war consensus lie is that somehow war uh, in which you kill a bunch of people and don't secure victory is morally superior to war where you do secure victory. I would say that the only way to morally justify a war is to win it. Otherwise, your ar the very argument that brought you into the war, this enemy must be defeated, ends up being proven a lie. I mean, Afghanistan, I think every America had every right to go into Afghanistan. Uh, the Taliban was harboring Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda flew planes into buildings in the United States, killed thousands of our citizens, uh, brought the nation into untold agony, pain, and horror. America had every right morally to go in and destroy the Taliban and destroy al-Qaeda. Yeah, but I would argue, but the Taliban now, But the Taliban now rules well, that's in my, Afghanistan. That's my the point. war was not won. But that's my point, actually. I've done a column about this tonight uh, for The Sun here in the UK, which is mm -hmm. I, I was editor of a newspaper when the Iraq war happened. I... Uh, opposed it very aggressively as the editor of the paper. Um, and sadly, we were borne out by events. It was a complete disaster, the Iraq war, in my view. It was illegally contested, I think. Um, and the consequences were appalling in terms of loss of life, a million people, in terms of ISIS being allowed to breed and create their merry hell around the world, in terms of complete dismantlement of, of Iraq itself as a, as a functioning country. Uh, and I think Afghanistan, again, 20 years of you know, attacking an enemy, which is now running the country again, seemed to me, again, to be kind of pointless. And I do wonder w whether Israel, in its blind fury, which I completely understand, has thought through the consequences of actually launching a full air, ground and sea offensive into Gaza as to actually what happens at the end of that.
Well, I suppose Israel wasn't really given the opportunity to fully contemplate what the consequences of that action might be because Israel didn't instigate this war. This war was instigated by a horrible terrorist attack on Israel, and a state is put in a position where it has to respond. Now, one might argue that the very fact that Israel has yet to actually launch their ground invasion means that they are actually making a calculation about what the cost will be, what victory looks like. Any rational person, any decent person can engage in a conversation about what is the appropriate response for Israel. Of course they can. Uh, but this sort of moral equivalency thing, I don't think is a sign of decency to engage in a conversation okay. about moral equivalency. Let me bring uh, Basim back in. You've been listening to this, Basim. What's your response to what Jeremy's been saying? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the gentleman's name. It's Jeremy Boring. He's the chief executive of The Daily Wire and co-founder with Ben Shapiro of The Daily Wire. Hi, Jeremy. Please say hello to Ben Shapiro and please tell him that I do think he is the smartest person to ever walk the earth. Thank you so much. So as a response to Jeremy, uh, I, 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 I agree with everything you said. I mean, what is disproportionate? I mean, that you, he just used the uh, examples from Second World War and America showing that civilian casualty is, uh, uh, I mean, I, I heard his voice. He was very sad. And he, as he was telling us, it is so inevitable to kill so many civilians because it's something that we cannot avoid. I hear the sadness in his voice. And I know that it's a very difficult decision to kill all of these civilians because that's for a higher cause. And I understand. But my question, I, I have two questions. The question is, how can you justify the killing in the West Bank where Hamas does not exist? And if the disproportionate response during the, over all of these years have actually worked, what will be new this time that did not happen before? I okay. just want to, uh, that, 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 that was my question. Okay, that Basim, was my question. Uh, I'm going okay. to so, ask. Okay, so, so, so now, so well, now, Basim, so now if to... I ask the question, can I, can I say something on my side? Well, a little you've, bit no, Basim, with respect, a little you've bit had personal? Basim, with respect, I gave you uh, half the show to have your side. Jeremy's had a lot less time. Uh, I am going to have to move on. Do you want me to leave? Basim, or do you I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to let you go because we've been on there with you for 40 minutes Okay, bye-bye. But listen, bye bye. bye I'd bye. like to talk to you again bye and bye. thank you for joining the program. I appreciate it. Oh, by, 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 by the way, my, my, my wife's family is, is all right and they sent us a house. It's, it's bombed. It's beautiful. It's, it's going to be a good uh, uh, like Halloween theme. So well, thank I'm you. very sorry for what your family are going through in Gaza and I mean oh, that no. very sincerely. By the way, I don't know, I, I don't know my fa I don't know him, by the way. I, don't, I haven't actually met them. They didn't even come to my wedding. They couldn't because they are stuck in Gaza. Okay. And she never saw them because, you know, Gaza is not a destination. Basim, I, as I know, say... I, we, 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 we hear their voices. Yeah, and it's, uh, they, they die. It's fine. It's I'm, fine. Basim, I wish your family all the very best. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate right. it. I, I don't. Thank you.